play. Well, and I, th I think it was good that they introduced the uh, the bus drivers who've driven them for the last 21 years and everybody else they had out there tonight. The Blue Jays have won the toss. They have elected to receive and they will defend the south goal. And Marty Garagosian getting ready to kick it off and we are underway. David Little, well, they're letting the ball roll and the Blue Jays did not play smart football there. Lathrop says they have it, but the Blue Jays will come up with it. And we'll see once uh, the pile looked like David Little. No, it was not. It was number 19, Philip Shane, sophomore, who finally fell on the football. And I'll tell you something, Frank, you don't, you don't want to start a football game like that, especially when you're the uh, favorite in the game. Well, that's the unusual bounces on the carpet again. You know, kids are used to the ball doing other things on the natural grass. They get here on the carpet and the ball just bounces differently. They're starting off already. They have one setback. That's Ramondo Locke, double wing, and now Bobby Johnson will come back as a tailback behind uh, Ramondo. And, oh, he got hit immediately at the line of scrimmage. The length of Chargers are fired up. Joe Mawney, number 79, the defensive tackle on the right-hand side, brought him down after a one-yard while they're going to Call a no gainer. It'll be second down and nine yards to go, second down and ten. A couple of names we want to point out to you Waleed Shamami with the defensive tackle and also the inside linebacker Mike Zabramski, both in their second starts in a row for some great play last week against Rochester. Second down and ten for the 30 yard line. Darziel Hall, the three running backs. Darziel Hall runs the option and he gets it down to the 42, maybe the 43 yard line. And he's brought down by Mike Zabramski. Ura King was over there too. But uh, Dar Darziel Hall, who had over 50 yards rushing last week, picks up 14. Well, Hall puts a lot of pressure on you out of this wishbone. He can run the ball very well. Lathrop chose to take the pitch away and make Hall run it and see how durable he can be. Donald Blackman is the tight end. Cassidy right wide to the right. They're running with Reynolds, Johnson, and Locke in the backfield behind Darziel Hall. First and 10, Blue Jays are on 42. Mondo with the football, and he keeps those legs churning till he gets to about the 44-yard line. Al Young, number 66, the nose tackle, is there for the Lathrop Chargers. And around there was 45, James Phillips, and it will be second down. Daryl Harper calling out the signals from the sideline. I think Lathrop's going to try to force Southfield to run the ball inside. The defense is spread out, and uh, I think they want they want the quarterback to have to run it and run it inside. Three yards on the lock pickup. It'll be second down and seven yards to go. Running the pitch, uh, rather running the option, and Bobby Johnson may have gotten it back to the line of scrimmage, but outstanding work by James Phillips number 45 and you know we talk about James Phillips offensively but Daryl Harper made it a point during the West Bloomfield game to talk about Phillips and his defensive skills. Well they uh, are running out of the wishbone and it's pure option and they have a nice pitch with a lead block. Lathrop is playing the uh, option very well to the strong side or the wide side of the field and uh, it looks like Southfield's going to have to come back to that short side to be successful. Coming into the game Phillips the third leading tackler with 34 solos and 50 51 helps. Bobby Johnson, two rushes minus two yards. Started out that way last week, too. Little dump pass over the middle. It is almost intercepted. He tried the right side of Blackman, but it was incomplete and underthrown to Urich King, or rather not Urich, but Bryant uh, Wyndham, who almost scooped it up off the grass. Real nice call here by Cal Fletcher. He fakes that uh, option play into the inside. They get the tight end out into the seam of the zone. He's wide open. The ball's thrown a little bit high or it would have been a first down. Good diving effort by Brian Windham and now Billy Troy averaging about 34 and a half yards a kick. Will kick from the line of scrimmage or the line of scrimmage is the 49. They let him kick it away and Billy gets a high end over end kick away. Yurik King, boy, ball bounced right up into him. There's a flag on the play. So whatever Yurik King gets will not be written down by our statistician Mike Brenner because he has to go to the penalty portion of the, of the uh, Statistician's sheet, 38-yard return, however, a 38-yard punt, rather, the 14-yard return will be negated by a clip. Well, they're going to get called for the clip here, and uh, the guy being clipped is David Little. He got down the field and uh, had the cover, and uh, number 88 for Lathrop's going to get him from behind. He's going to push him with his hands right on the numbers and uh, nullifies a, a great effort by King. They'll mark it down. They'll start it at the 12-yard line. 
Marty Gurigosian will have Phillips and Stevens. Uh, they've gone with this offense most of the year. John LaPierre and Joe Monty Zabramski Wilds, uh, a late addition to the offensive line uh, in the last couple of games. In fact, I think he got his first start against West Bloomfield. King motion right. Marty, counter play handoff to Duran Stevens, and Duran gets it to about the 16 yard line, a five yard pickup. He was brought down by number 19, Philip Shane, so, or rather, Ricky Duncan, uh, number, uh, number 10, Ricky Henry. Can't make that many mistakes on one play, Frank, but there's the offensive line of the Blue Jays. And there is a rock solid Southfield defense right there. Henry will have one on one coverage with Rob, uh, rather with Will Elkins. Bobby Johnson will not follow King in motion who comes to join Elkins. James Phillips with the football and Phillips is grabbed in the backfield by Carl Miller, number 65. Also some help there from number 38, Warren Beard. So they get it to the 19 yard line and it will bring up a third down and two. Well, Lathrop's just running their veer offense and with motion, trying to see how Southfield's gonna react to it. And uh, it's important now to at least pick up one first down because they'll be punting with terrible field position if they don't. From the 19 yard line now, third down and two, 7.50 to go in the first quarter. We are scoreless at the Silver Dome. The Blue Jays had a punt on their first possession. Phillips in motion out of the backfield to the left. The handoff is to Stevens, and Stevens, I don't know whether he got the first down. He got it near the 21 yard line, and that's all he needed to do actually was get it to the 38, uh, the uh, 21 yard line. 38 Warren Beard made the stop, and it's gonna be a first down for Southfield Lathrop. Well, they give them motion, spread them out, and they come right in. Excellent line charge by Lathrop, and uh, Stevens does everything he can to pick up the first down and just barely achieves that. They will send both Elkins, number 16, and Yuri King to the left-hand side. Phillips and Stevens are the running backs. James Phillips hit hard by the Southfield defense. Getting up uh, off the bottom, number 40, that is Ramondo Locke. He had some, some help over there, but uh, Phillips picks up a nice gainer of about seven yards. Well, it appears that Southfield Lathrop's got an excellent game plan here. They, they're picking right at the linebackers. They're trying to uh, take away Southfield's speed and attack them with strength rather than beat their quickness to the corners. Again, King and Elkins will go to the left side. The tight end, Doring, set on the right. The back split behind Garagosian on this second down and two. Marty's gonna throw surprisingly, and he steps out of the grasp of one of the Blue Jay defenders. Stevens catches the football out of the backfield, but is wrapped up and thrown down by Ricky Henry. But 39, Chris, Chris Beattie had him, uh, had Marty Garagosian in his sights. Well, they had a short uh, yardage on second down. Looks like they were gonna go for the, for the long throw here. They've got way too much penetration on the defensive part, and uh, Southfield maintained their composure and shut the play down. Loss of five on the play. It'll be third down and seven yards to go. King will be the lone wide out as uh, they'll set Elkins in tight on the right-hand side, almost next to Al Young. They pitch it back to Duran Stevens. Good job of changing directions, and he might have been able to change directions enough for the first down. Beatty again in on the stop. Jeff Reynolds is coming off the field. He was in on the stop as well. Well, you know that uh, Daryl Harper understands uh, Bob Martin's defense very well, having worked with him, and uh, probably feels he has a, a good concept of how to attack it and attack the philosophy, and so far that proves to be true. 10 for Stevens, so the Blue Jays, uh, rather the Chargers, pick up their second first down. The ball at the 34-yard line, first down, both wide outs to the left, that's Elkins and King. Now Phillips will come out of the backfield, motion left, Marty. Option play, the ball will go off the foot of Duran Stevens and out of bounds, about the 33 yard line. So a one yard loss on that fumble and it'll be from second down and 11 for the Blue Jays, rather the Chargers at the 33. Well, Marty Garagosian fumbles his mouthpiece to start out with and picks that up. So it uh, kind of worked out that they did fumble to play along with it. Somewhere between the 32 and 33, but as you may or may not know, that uh, any time it's in advance of another uh, another yard line, it counts as the succeeding yard line. Garagosian looks like the quarterback draw, and Marty runs that so well, you ask yourself after they run it on occasion, Frank, whether it was designed or whether it was a busted play, the stop was made by Derek Woods. 
Well, I think he's reading that linebacker. If the linebacker is really bailing out to shut off the veer and uh, take away their outside game, I think he has the license to be able to read that and come back and run his own uh, draw play. As we may or may not have touched on, Marty, a second year starter for the, for the Chargers. Doring, the tight end on the right side, Elkins left and King trying to run it uh, out of the wing formation, actually coming back to the quarterback, and I think that there might have been some illegal motion, maybe a couple of guys in motion at the same time. Well, as you know, in high school football, you, or any football level in, in the U.S., you can only have one man in motion, and uh, when you use as much motion as Southfield Lathrop, if you get anybody else leaning, he doesn't get that luxury of being able to reset. It's automatically a penalty. It is not a penalty in Canadian football, but obviously that the penalty for illegal motion is 20% less. I think you said that in the first game. I hope they don't. Uh, that's why I said it now, because no one would notice I repeated myself. It's like, well, never mind. Third down and 14 now from the 30. Marty is in trouble and he throws it down the middle off the hands of Yura King and incomplete. Good, good coverage by the Blue Jays down there. Number 42, David Little dropped off to cover Yura King. And I'll tell you something, uh, so far they've done a nice job in keeping King covered. Well, Lathrop's putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback and uh, King got himself open, but uh, Marty had trouble seeing him because he had people right down his face. And, uh, but Lathrop's kicking the football, but they did get the field position they needed. Garagosian averaging almost 34 yards a kick. He gets a high spiraling kick away. Cassidy Wright will let it roll, and it will take a Lathrop roll and be touched at the 25-yard line. And so for Marty, it's uh, going to be a 39-yard punt and roll, and the Blue Jays will take over. First down and 10 at their own 24-yard line. Well, that, that was a heads-up play by uh, number 20 on, on the uh, Lathrop team because once that ball, Bryant uh, Windrum, once that ball is touched, then Southfield has the opportunity to go and get it. And even if they fumble or lose the ball, they're going to get it back because you have a choice of having the ball where it finished up or at the point of first touching. And if he had just let it fall, Southfield would have had it. They'll go with the two wideouts now to the left-hand side. That's Reynolds and right to the left. Bobby Johnson takes the deep handoff, and Bobby Johnson is in the secondary, almost busted it, got it up to the 40-yard line, but was grabbed from behind as uh, he comes up with a big 14-yard run, and the Blue Jays. We're going to talk about their big play tendencies here in just a second. Well, Windrum saves the day here because he's the last man, and uh, he just gets him by the shoelace and gets it and pulls him down where he was going to the races. Last year, Mike Brenner had Bobby Johnson, 23 carries, 193 yards, two touchdowns, and he kicked two extra points. The Blue Jays last week against Ferndale had trouble getting their offense going in the first series and then came back and started moving. They're moving from the 40 right now. Deep to Bobby J, and he meets a crowd. Ray Moreland is on top of it, one of the defensive ends. Also helped out by Waleed Shamami, number 51 for the Lathrop Chargers. Well, Bobby Johnson is definitely the man they have to concentrate on. He, he tore him up last year, as you, uh, you know, highlighted with almost 200 yards rushing. And I'm sure that's who they want to stop today. And so far they've been forcing the quarterback to carry the football. Quarter rip, whipping right along, three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter, and we are scoreless. The ball at the 42-yard line of the, lay of the Blue Jays in the, their possession. Option play to Bobby Johnson, but Duran Stevens on the safety blitz coming through, bringing him down at the 38-yard line, a four-yard loss for Bobby Johnson. Well, Lathrop's uh, an excellent defensive scam, or uh, scam. Scheme. I don't think they're scamming them. Defensive stand, they've got uh, the option play pretty well under control at this point, which is a, a big thing for uh, Southfield to execute. And they're going to just make them get that tough yardage inside and, and maybe put the ball up. They're going to use Blackman as a wide out to the right side. This is going to be interesting. They're not going to go with a tight end. Nope, now they're going to put Reynolds in the slot on the right. They have uh, uh, Ricky Porter, not Ricky Porter, but uh, Porter. Now, right now, let's talk about Jeff Reynolds, and Reynolds is getting wrapped up by Brian Windham, and uh, Will Elkins was there. So, too, was Richard Harvey, and, oh, just most of the length of Chargers that time. Chris Porter, Chris Porter is who I was trying to tell you about, and he was out to the left side, but this time they went to Jeff Reynolds. 
Well, everybody in red sniffed this one out. This was going to be a reverse. And uh, even though he was missed, he was forced deep, and it gave uh, the uh, Lathrop Chargers an opportunity to get there and throw him for a large loss. Mark it back at the 35-yard line. Fourth down, 15 yards to go. Billy Troy, 38 yards on his first punt. Here they come, and he gets it to turn over. And Yuri King might be better. Oh, he picks it up at the 20. Yuri King gets back the yardage that, he, that the length of Chargers lost on the bounce. That was a gutty play by Yuri King, but I'm also sure that he's concerned or aware of the field conditions. Well, I, I think that the point I made earlier that it's the last last game of the season, you're, you're two and six or whatever your record is, and this is your opportunity to pull the big upset. You pull out all the stops. This is when you take chances. You go uh, let your best athletes go with their athletic ability and hope you can break something that will inspire you. 44-yard <laughs> punt. It was returned 11 yards. First down and 10 at the 31-yard line for the Latham Chargers. A minute 50 to go in the first quarter, and we are scoreless at the Silverdome. This time Duran Stevens, and Stevens is hit as he gets to the 35-yard line. Ricky Henry was over there to make the stop. Philip, uh, rather, Warren Beard was over there, along with the number 40, Ramondo Locke. Well, they're attacking the short side of the field. They're getting the south field to shift down to the wide side and, and into the strength of their formation. And they're coming with the pitch, and this has been relatively successful so far tonight. Almost into the Menzo cam down on the sideline. Six yard pickup, second out and four, 38 yard line. Minute 45 to go, first quarter. Well, they smell that one out. They handed it in to, to, hand it to James Phillips, and Phillips ran right into most of the Southfield offensive line. Carl Miller, or defensive line rather, 65. Carl Miller was there to make the stop. Karagosian felt he had the corner, and he wanted to, to pull the ball, and uh, he couldn't get it out. And uh, that play wasn't as designed. You know, he read the block on the tackle, wanted to pull the football and run the option on the corner, but he couldn't get it out of his hands. The Chargers are taking plenty of time calling this one. There'll be about a minute and uh, some single seconds to go in the first quarter when it's snapped. They're running up with the three running backs as they bring Yurik King in the backfield. Counterplay handoff to James Phillips and the misdirection gets him into the open. James Phillips, great downfield block by Doring. James Phillips will be thrown down at, by Marvin Reynolds at about the five yard line. But as we watch this play develop, Frank, James Phillips' run was extended by a great block by Rob Doring. Now you have a trap play. They've uh, faked the motion, came back with a counter, and uh, he was off to the races. And it looks like he was going to be caught up around the 35-yard line, but an outstanding block by number 88. That was 86, Doring. Who was, was that Doring? The man I, who brought him, uh, the, the tight end, who came back to block, and he that was a solid block. He just excellent. didn't get in the way. 54 yards on the run by James Phillips. The ball is at the seven yard line, Garagosian. Quarterback, draw, touchdown, Lathrop. Well, there's the, you know, he's reading the linebacker. He dropped back for the pass, and if the linebacker leaves when he goes to the drop back, he's got that license to go. And, you know, I feel that he has been such a, a strong competitor for them. They give him the uh, ability to read or the the authority to read those plays and excellent judgment on Marty Garagosian's part. I'll tell you something, Frank. Uh, we've talked about this before, and we'll, we'll do this after the extra point attempt. Marty out of the Will Elkins hole. It's down, it's up, and it is good. And so with 46 seconds to play in the first quarter, the Southfield eighth of Chargers have a seven to nothing lead over the Southfield Blue Jays. We've talked about this, Kevin Burns and I. Oh, well, let's watch the uh, the touchdown first of all right here. Well, Gary Gozian drops back as if he's going to pass and he's looking at that linebacker all the way and uh, what gave away that it was a design running play is you saw the lineman get downfield and uh, you know, Southfield didn't respond to that, responded as if it was a pass, and the hole was big enough to put all of us through. Well, there, there is a tendency sometime when a team comes into a, a Southfield, Southfield Lathrop game, no matter what the sport is, that the underdog, and there's gonna be a whistle, so that uh, kickoff at Temple being negated. But every time we do a Southfield, Southfield Lathrop game, with the exception of hockey, uh, it just seems like the team that really is not going to win or is not supposed to win comes up with a win. Remember the baseball game we did? 
Yeah, we did we did a baseball game and they got an outstanding pitching effort out of a out of a young man who really hadn't pitched that much before. And uh, it seems to be in these games as last year an unknown rises to the occasion makes the big plays. Well, everybody knows about James Phillips, three-year starter. The Blue Jays having trouble handling that bouncing ball, and Bobby Johnson has it, goes to the outside, and is run out of bounds by Will Elkins. Elkins looked like he did more damage to one of his own players. It looked like Doring 86 was over there across the way. But the Blue Jays will have excellent field position. And I'll tell you one thing, Frank, Southfield, as we have talked about before, can score from anywhere on the field. And I would not be too surprised to see a little one-on-one -on -one action with Darzeel Hall and Cassidy, Cassidy Wright. There's your scoring drive, and it didn't take very long. Well, Southfield can't panic right here. They can't come out and try to do something to that's gonna destroy themselves right off the bat. Cassidy right to the left, Jeff Reynolds right. Darziel Hall, gonna have to run this time, and now he fires to the middle of the field, and Blackman makes the catch. Donald Blackman to the 31 yard line, and Darziel Hall did a great job of getting out of the way of the uncharging Chargers, delivering a 22 yard pass to Donald Blackman, his second reception of the season. Well, it's run for your lifetime, and the receiver does a good job of coming back to the football, and then Cassidy Wright does even a better job of not clipping. Uh, he was in a position where he could come back and help, and he pulled off and didn't get the clip and allowed the play to, to progress as planned. This will probably be the final play of the first quarter. One second to go on the clock, they hand it off to Donald Blackman and his five yard run to the 25 yard line ends the first quarter. And so after one, from the Pontiac Silverdome, it's the Southfield eighth of Chargers seven, the Southfield Blue Jays nothing. Looking for something really wild? <laughs> National Geographic Explorer, 9 a.m. Eastern on the Superstation every Saturday morning. Well, the Blue Jays are on a march there at the 25-yard line. Jeff Reynolds comes into the lineup. David Little comes out of there. The ball will be at the length of 25-yard line. It is seven and nothing. Marty Garagosian seven-yard touchdown run. And uh, for Marty on the season, uh, he has cranked uh, his touchdown total on the ground. Well, actually, only his second of the season. They only have seven on the ground. There's a fumble, and it's picked up, uh, dived down by Bobby Johnson as he picks the ball up at the 27-yard line. So a loss on the play of about uh, two yards, and it will be third down and seven. Bobby Johnson does a nice job of diving on the ball and then covering it up rather than going and uh, sitting there and trying to dive toward it and kicking it out as they do a lot of times. You're going to see the ball on the carpet. He's going to go and then he's going to roll it to him, get in that fetal position and protect it. Ray Moreland was the one who had drawn a beat on him. That touchdown by Garagosian, only the seventh touchdown on the ground for the Latham Chargers this season. From the 26-yard line, the Southfield Blue Jays have the football, this big third down play. Darzeel Hall looking to the end zone, but you're a Kings down there with Cassidy Wright and two great receivers. But in this particular case, uh, the one receiver that plays defensive back as well made the defensive play. Well, Cassidy Wright almost interfered on that. Uh, we, we saw King in, in excellent position and right as he was going by him, kind of bumped his shoulder. The official felt it was uh, in the natural movement of trying to catch the football and uh, possibly saved them a penalty. He turned him right around when he poked him. Fourth down and they will go for it at the 25 yard line. They need five. Actually, the stick is right at the 21. One pump down the middle, intercepted. Intercepted by Duran Stevens, and the official threw the flag in the air about 25 yards that time. Wanted to make sure that everyone was able to see it. That was a helium flag, Frank. We'll see who the penalty will be on. It should be on Southfield, the way Latham's reacting. Well, I think they're calling it against Southfield, and uh, if it's after the interception, it depends. I don't, uh, I haven't had any indication here. 
the ball was supposed to be that dump pass that they missed on earlier. Uh, he pumped the ball. He threw it right in the uh, hands of the defender. And uh, looks like the flag that was thrown may have been, it could have been something like illegal receiver downfield, and then that would the penalty would be off with the interception. That is the second turnover of the season for Duran Stevens. He has a fumble recovery as well. Blue Jays turn it over on the 23-yard line, and James Phillips this time is wrapped up and thrown down by Derek Woods and Billy Troy. Loss, well, we'll call it a no-gainer on that one. It'll be second down and 10 from the 23. 10 and a half to go in the first half. The Chargers lead the Blue Jays 7 to nothing. Well, they, Southfield had, uh, Lathrop had gotten themselves a nice rhythm going on that last drive. Uh, here they get shut down for no gain, but uh, I think they know what they want to do here. That was a loss on the play of two yards from where they put the football down. Garagosian looks to throw. Here comes the rush. Marty running away from it, dumps it off in the middle, and completes it down there to Rob Doring at the 30-yard line. Oh, Garagosian did a great job of getting away from the on-charging rush of number 62, Kevin Beverly, and he got rid of the football. You're going to see Lath Lathrop line up in an unbalanced line and try to get Southfield to shift down because when they have been shifting down, they've been coming back to the weak side. Uh, this time they roll out and threw the ball good for almost a first down. So a big third down play now, third down and three from the 30. Marty, counter play handoff to Rand Stevens, first down, 35 yard line. Bobby Johnson slowed him down and Chris Beatty put the finishing touches on it, but not until after he picked up five and a first down. And now Will Elkins will come back in the lineup. They were going apparently with the two tight end situation on that play. Well, that's the second time where they faked that pitch and they've had that trap play coming back with Duran Stevens. And uh, that's a, a big play for them and they're getting those linebackers to, to get out of there too quickly and overreact. From the 35, Elkins right, Stevens in the pass pattern, but he's being double covered. There's a flag on the play. There'll be some holding and Garagosian better get rid of it. And he does and that could be grounding. I don't know who was in the general area. Al Young was down there. Uh, Eamon Wilds was down there. And Marty Garagosian got rid of the football, but the flag is going to negate everything. Yeah, he was under pressure from uh, right from the moment that ball was snapped. And he runs for his life. And at the end of the play, there's the only man near it is a lineman. I'm surprised they didn't call the grounding call here other than they could say that he was trying to throw it deeper and because he was pulled down, he didn't get enough on it. Yeah, Mike Brennan was mentioning that uh, Yuri King was in the pass band, and we, uh, we didn't see him in that particular picture, but they're gonna march it back now to the 19-yard line. The Blue Jays, and we'll just bring this up right now, have uh, forced 29 turnovers this year. They had two intercepted passes last week against Ferndale, and they have 17 fumble recoveries. From the 19, First down, 25 yards to go, and they, ooh, they overthrew Doring, and somebody, Jeff Reynolds just really nailed Doring coming out of the backfield. Oh, that was a that was vicious, clean, but vicious. Yeah, you can only react to that uh, dump pass in that fashion. You know, the way you break it up is you stick that guy in the next time he peeks for you, and you hope he drops it. Uh, this is the point where Darrell Harper likes to throw the shuffle pass, Jim. Well, we'll see if Coach Plakis has this one figured out. Draw play handoff. They ran it uh, with King out of the backfield, and Yuri King gets the ball up to the 26-yard line. I think the problem today, Frank, is that Southfield's across the field so that uh, Darrell cannot turn around and look at you, so it's going to be a little more difficult for you to call his plays for him today. That's true. That could be, but uh, <laughs> I also, every time I get on TV, I talk about his shuffle pass because I love watching it because it always works, and I don't know how, how come anybody ever lets him get away with it, but uh, Darrell has a great timing as to when, to when to call it. Four out of five on third down conversions. This one's got to go 19 yards, and Garrett goes in back to throw. Here comes Beverly. Screen pass right side, James Phillips, and out of bounds. Good coverage across the way by number 39, and that is Beatty. He tried to get it and and did get it to Phillips, but he had caught it out of bounds. Well, Darrell seems upset about something. I'm not sure what, but uh, the officials are responding to it. Uh, Let's see if he might have gotten pushed out of bounds and didn't get a chance to make the catch. No. 
8.09 to go in the half. It's 7 nothing Southfield Lathrop. What did your bookie say when you called him? 39-yard <laughs> Garagosian punt the last time. Here they come, and Marty gets it into the air, but not very far. Looked like it hit one of the Lathrop players uh, in the back of the foot, about the 45. The Blue Jays cover it at the Lathrop 43-yard line. Jesse Miles was down there for the Blue Jays, number 43, along with Michael Hines, 37. A couple of the guys who play almost exclusively on the special teams, but they're always down there. Well, Southfield has the ball in excellent field position, and uh, I think it's really going to be important here for uh, the Chargers to uh, get them early on first down or, or steal a down, first or second down, with maybe sending a linebacker or, or something weird. They'll march, <laughs> they'll march it, uh, start it, I should say, at the 43-yard line. Darziel Hall has time, runs out of it, down the middle, and Blackman catches it for the touchdown! Donald Blackman in stride, 42 yards, touchdown pass, his third pass reception of his career, his third in two weeks, and his first touchdown reception of the 1988 season. Well, they caught King a little uh, flat-footed. They had the undercover, and that's going to release the King deep. And uh, he didn't get over there. I think he was looking at the run. It was a great call on first down, and uh, obviously caught Lathrop looking. Officially 43 yards there, student body left and right, and they throw it incomplete. Uh, again, they load them up on the left-hand side. We missed that last week against Ferndale, and uh, they snapped the ball if the defense isn't responding to it, and they tried to get it, but uh, this time they went uh, into the crowd. Well, they, uh, you know, last week they snapped the ball, and they went straight ahead, and they got their two-point conversion. Now they tried to get everybody to react to the snap of the ball and, and throw it behind the wedge, uh, though the pass was overthrown and it ended up to be nothing. So the punt by Garagosian of 28 yards set him up in good stead at the 43-yard line, and Donald Blackman catches a 43-yard touchdown pass from Darzio Hall, his sixth touchdown pass of the season. Well, well they're going to catch... Uh, the defensive secondary flat-footed on first down. I'm sure they thought they were going to run the football. Uh, I, with the bigger look there, I can see where King got tied up. They did send a man down the middle to tie up Yurik King, who had deep coverage on that side, and Blackman just beat them all deep. Well, last year, Paul Voss from Lathrop caught his first touchdown pass of the year in the last game of the season. Donald Blackman doing likewise for the Blue Jays here. King, or rather, Bryant Windham takes it at the 25-yard line, and he gets it all the way up to the 37. Blue Jays were down there. They were hustling, but uh, the stop was made by DeMont Goolsby, number 20, but uh, not until after a 10-yard return. First down and 10 chargers at their own. 36, 7.45 to go in the first half. 7-6, Lathrop. The last time Lathrop had the ball in good field position, they marched right down and scored. Uh, the other two times they had it very deep in their own territory. We'll see if Darrell can get some rhythm going here. One wide out. And they'll go the other way, this time to Duran Stevens. Bobby Johnson from his secondary position came up and submarine that play, uh, although Duran did manage a couple three yards on the play. Well, what they're trying to do is they're setting up in an unbalanced line, getting Southfield to shift down, and then they're giving the quick pitch back away from the, the strength of the offense and trying to use uh, Duran's speed to just beat people to the corner. King will go to the left side. Again, the lone wideout. So the two tight end situation for Daryl Harper. And he's looking to King left sideline, and King comes back, catches the ball, turns Blackman around, but he had some help down there on the tackle. Marvin uh, Reynolds, number 35, was there, and also number 39, uh, Chris Beatty. 13 yards and a first down, and there's some of the things that uh, Yuri King has done all season long. Offense, defense, doesn't really make a difference. Well, Blackman's been covering King, uh, you know, looking to the inside, not knowing where the ball is. He got turned around there because King looked to the ball, and that was his cue to turn, and then he just took off on him. Backs are split behind Garagosian on first down for the 48. He'll go the other sideline, same man, King, and same man there to tackle him. Donald Blackman, number 24. So King left and King right, and another first down for the Lathrop Chargers. Wait, 
you have to understand what the Southfield backs are doing, defensive backs. They're playing a pro style where they're running, looking at the man's chest. And when he looks up for the football, then they turn and look for it. What their king is doing is an excellent job of looking at the football and it's not being thrown and then taking off on him when he turns his head. It's something Daryl obviously picked up in the scouting report. Not from television, because we don't show enough of the defense. <laughs> That's for you, Daryl. To the inside goes Marty Garagosian on the run, and Beattie brings him down. He had help over there from Donald Blackman. That last pass play, by the way, to Yuri King, 20 yards. This time, a seven-yard pickup. They'll make it a five-yarder, second down and five. They'll put the ball down at the 23. Blackman got dinged a little bit on that play, and he's coming out. And uh, they're sending uh, Ricky Henry in, to, uh, in his place. We'll see if they pick on Henry. First play, first play after the punt. Blue Jays did that last week, too. Bobby Johnson, 71-yard touchdown run against Ferndale. Garagosian back to throw, flag. Here they come after him, and he is thrown down by Ramondo Locke at the 35-yard line. Garagosian sacked back at the... 35 and they will turn down that penalty illegal procedure or actually illegal motion against the Southfield Latham Chargers. Well the blocking broke down on the corner it, on both sides he gets flushed out of the uh, pocket by the man who just came into the ball game. Uh, that was locked. Num number 10 Henry from behind Let's go, and uh, then he was run down on the other corner. Good combination getting his attention and Locke putting a hammer on him. Seven to six, Lathrop in the lead, but uh, they're working backwards now, third down and 17. Marty back to throw with time, now running out of it and is trying to run for his life. Swing pass to Elkins, good open field effort that time by Henry, but the pass will go for about a no gainer as he Elkins smartly getting it back to the 35 yard line. A lot of activity going on during that play, Frank. Well, it looks like they're going to have a penalty at the end of it, but Marty does a great job of avoiding everything. His receivers come back and, and get themselves known. And uh, Elkins, I don't did know, it. Elkins does a great job of keeping his balance, but it looks like a clip or something on the uh, toward the end of the play, and uh, that's going to send them back another 15. That sometime you get an awful lot Frank when you well you know as well as I do that that uh, when you're scrambling type of situation there's just a lot there's not a controlled atmosphere out there and you do a lot of things that maybe you don't even know you did yeah a lot of people are coming back to the ball and so you're hitting people from behind and that's what happened on that play they have to get the ball all the way down to the 18 yard line, it is fourth down, it is third down rather, and 27 yards to go. King in motion, Marty ought to mail this one. Down the middle, Stevens falling down, could not catch the football, that was rather James Phillips. The pass goes incomplete, and so it'll be punting time for Garagosian and the Chargers. 4.58 to go on the half, 7-6 Lathrop. Well, they had their receiver open, except he fell down, but it would have put them in a position where I think they would have gone on fourth down and tried to pick up the first down. Said they're going to kick it, and I'm sure they're going to angle for the sidelines. 39 and 28 on Marty, and he fumbles the ball. Now we're going to see if he's going to throw it. I think maybe smartly held, held on to it. The snap was high, but Garagosian did a good job of not throwing the football, Frank, because that could have been an illegal uh, man downfield. Well, the question is who jumped on the inside, because on the inside you have two linemen jump, but it looks like the uh, charger drew him off sides, and uh, they're going to take the play rather than the penalty. Locke was the man who tackled him back there. So... A little breakdown in the punting game. The special teams of the Lathrop Chargers and the Blue Jays have a great opportunity now as they take over first down and 10 at the 36-yard line of the Lathrop Chargers, trailing by one, just inside of five minutes to play in the first half of the Silverdome. Bobby Johnson stays back to blocks.
Sideline pass incomplete. Intended either for the deep man, Cassidy Wright, or the short man, Romano Locke. Locke coming out of the backfield, and Johnson staying in the backfield to block. Well, Southfield stayed consistent. When they've got the ball and the, uh, after the short punt before, they came right back with a pass for a touchdown. Here they are with a, looks like they're going to do a sprint out, but he really pulls the football and throws it. But Lathrop covered it much better than they did the time before. Good job by Bobby Johnson now blocking on Richard Harvey, the outside linebacker. Otherwise, otherwise, I don't think Darzell Hall would know what hit him. Second down and 10, he pitches back to Bobby Johnson looking for a lock block. He got one from Carl Miller and we're gonna get a clip. I don't know who of those two that I mentioned uh, committed the clip, but you could see it happen right around the 30 yard line where the flag went. We won't uh, name the guilty party, but we'll watch him march it off. Well, the pitch is there. They have the corner knocked down. It's pretty well sealed, and it's good blocking down there, and it's coming from behind. And boy, I'll tell you, the officials saw the end of that play, and it was not a clip. Didn't think so myself, and Frank. No clip. He dove in front of him, and the officials saw the end of it. And, you know, the golden rule on that for the, for the officials is if you don't see the beginning of the clip, you don't call it because you never know if the man turned his back on him or not. Got him right in the uh, left shoulder, the back of the left shoulder. So they'll march it back now to the 43 yard line. It'll be second down and 17 yards ago. They need to get it to the 26. Darzio Hall trying to run the option and does, gets in the secondary, needs a block and got a good one there from Chris Porter to get him a couple more yards and maybe back to the original line of scrimmage. But a good job there by Duran Stevens to turn in the play. Well, he's running his own version of that quarterback draw, and uh, he's getting the blocking, does a good job of cutting back against the grain, but uh, the Lathrop defense is extremely quick as we've seen in the past few weeks. It is third down, 11 yards to go, so he did not get back the penalty yardage. Missed that by about a yard. Darziel Hall under pressure, now running away from pressure. Needs a couple more, and he's gonna lack the first down, but uh, good heady running that time by Darziel Hall. Brian Windham was among the many in that uh, Lathrop stack. Al Young, Marty Garagosian there too. Now Marty will come out of the lineup, and Waleed Shamami will come in, giving him a little more beef up front. Well, he's going to drop back and try to throw the football here, but he saw the coverage was excellent by the uh, Chargers, and he picks his hole inside because the linebackers got real good depth on their pass defense and uh, almost picked up the first down. Fourth and one. One wide receiver. Actually, they're two out in the pass pattern, surprisingly. Deep handoff, Bobby Johnson to the outside, trying to get away from Stevens and does, and stepped out of bounds about the 11-yard line. He got away from Duran Stevens, and in trying to get away from him, he stepped out of bounds. Well, he's gonna pick up the first down, and this is a good safe call. Bobby Johnson, a good hard runner, their bread and butter man, and uh, he just, you can see his right foot hit the line, and the official was in an excellent position to make the call. 2.56 to go in the second quarter, the Blue Jays. Trail the Chargers by the score of seven to six. Marty Garagosian, seven yard touchdown run. 46 seconds before the end of the first quarter. And then uh, about midway through the second quarter, actually, yeah, midway through the second quarter, a 43 yard touchdown pass from Darziel Hall to Donald Blackman. Difference was the Garagosian extra point on his own touchdown. From the 11, Hall in trouble. Running out of trouble, getting away from a couple of Lathrop players and getting down very, very close to the first down. Well, their best weapon right now is to drop back for a pass and uh, get flushed out of the pocket. Ray Moreland looked like he was in on the uh, stop. And uh, returning to LO11 this week is the Campus Network NCTV. If you like variety with your television viewing, you'll love NCTV. From the detective series Richard Diamond to Uncensored, Flash Gordon and Honey West, catch it all right here on LO11. From the six yard line, Bobby Johnson, touchdown. Oh, it looked almost as if Bobby asked them politely to get out of his way because it was about as easy a touchdown 
with those many people around him as Bobby Johnson has scored this year. And for Bobby Johnson, his uh, eighth touchdown on the ground. You're going to see his balance. He bounces off people, uh, is able to spin into the end zone, but it's his balance that makes him such a great runner. Some good downfield blocking. Kevin Beverly, number 62, uh, man that sprung him free. The entire offensive line, Beverly, and uh, at the center position, and Billy Troy and Brent Howard, the guards, and Thomas Shear and Carl Miller, the tackles. Last year, they had a senior-laden offensive line, Frank, and that was really the most frustrating thing about their season last year. They had, if you can come into a season with an offensive line that's experienced, you can do just about anything you want, and they just didn't do it. Well, I think you brought out a good point, and they opened with Farmington Harrison last year, and being a Class B school and Southfield Lathrop feeling that they were Class A, and they're, I'm sorry, Southfield High, uh, and they, they got ripped by Harrison and it seemed to affect their whole season. And this year they came out, and uh, again, they got beat by Harrison, but it was a, a better ball game. They didn't drop their head, and obviously Harrison's outstanding. They just beat the number six team in the state 45 to six last week, so they're not real bad. And that's John Glenn, and that's a class A team. They're going for two here, legitimately. And now they're gonna have to go from two, but from five yards further back. To just elaborate on that point, it just seems like, like you said, they never recovered. Now, this year, maybe they were just mentally tougher going into the rest of the season, but they went the next game, and they went into Hazel Park, and they beat the Vikings. There were situations during that game, as we alluded to in the first game, that uh, Southfield got a few breaks because of injuries uh, to some of the Hazel Park players, a couple turnovers, but they forced the turnovers. I think eight turnovers in that, uh, in that game against Hazel Park. So, bottom line is, Southfield was more, was ready for Harrison, even though they didn't beat him this year, but they didn't let it uh, affect their whole season. They're still going for two. Bobby Johnson out of the backfield, swing pass Bobby, and he loses his shoe and is down at the five yard line. And so that is the way that particular two point conversion attempt will terminate. And with two minutes and 14 seconds to go in the first half, it is 12 to seven in favor of Southfield. Well, you're gonna see the uh, ability of the carpet to really grip your shoe. He goes to make the cut and uh, comes right out of his shoe and is tackled short of the first or the uh, extra point. I should point out to you that with about, well, in the second quarter of last year's game, with, um, where were we? With three minutes and eight seconds to play, the Lathrop Chargers had a 20 to 13 lead. They'd score one more touchdown to make it 26 to 13 at halftime. I don't think we're going to see that in this football game because both defenses are hot and they are really hitting very, very well. Bobby Johnson ties his shoe and will put it on the far hash mark. Yura King is standing back at about his 12 yard line. And uh, then Bryant Windham standing back on the 20. Bobby Johnson gets a good high end over end kick away. It is taken by Yura King, or rather by Brian Windham at the 20. He gets it up to the 32 yard line. Well, the Blue Jays really stuck him down there. And now uh, David Little was down there, had some help from number 33, Reggie Haggard. So you're seeing a lot of names, Frank, on the special teams uh, that are not playing during the regular portion or the other portions of the football game. And it's nice to be able to mention their names. Yeah, I think, it, you know, this late in the season, everybody's been practicing. You give everybody a chance to play. Uh, something that may enter into the game, because with a five-point lead, uh, two field goals can win it for you. And later on, we'll point out uh, it's difficult to kick a field goal in this building. We have elaborated on that in the past, and uh, we'll, we'll give you a, a close-up look at it in a second. Or a little, a little longer than a second. Marty Garagosian is going to be sacked back there. Derek Woods had help. Ramondo Locke was back there too, and maybe somebody else that uh, probably will get into the stat sheets, but it was Derek Woods and Mondo Locke who really got a hold of Garagosian. Well, this is what you call a coverage sack because nobody was open. He had enough time to throw it, and then, uh, you know, when there was nobody open, the blocking broke down and he gets sacked. Now we're going to get a timeout called by Lathrop. I would think Southfield would want to call a timeout, not Lathrop, if uh, the scoreboard is correct. 
We also wanted to point out uh, that Derek Woods was the man who made the initial hit and then got help from Ramondo. We also want to remind you to watch Speak Out with Brent Trieste live this Tuesday at 7.30 on LO11. Brent and his studio audience will take a look at macrobiotics. Are you what you eat? If uh, you missed the live show on Tuesday, it will be replayed Sunday at 7 o'clock. Tune in to find out what your neighbors think right here on LO11. Are you what you eat? Interesting. That, that's uh, part of my new book called So Much Food, So Little Time. Last three plays, Mike Brenner says, on the Lathrop side of things, minus 12, minus 16, minus 5. They're second down and 15 now. Marty is back to throw. Here they come again. He gets out of the way, throws a sideline pass to Doring, and it's broken up beautifully across the way by Jeff Reynolds. Jeff Reynolds reacted very well to the football. That was another play that took a lot of time to develop because Marty Garagosian was running for his life in the secondary. And uh, Dorian does work himself free. And uh, the ball has to be in the air a long time because he threw the ball about 50 yards. And Dorian does a great job of diving in front and knocking the ball dead. Third down now, 15 yards to go. King right and Will Hawkins out to the right side. Actually, you're King out to the left. The backs are split. Marty is back and hit as he throws and it is up for grabs, but no one wants it. King was down there. Donald Blackman and uh, Marvin Reynolds had coverage on the right-hand side. Jeff was kind of playing center field. I'll tell you, if King doesn't go to knock the ball down, King is going to get himself open. The ball is going to be underthrown because the quarterback gets hit as he releases it. And he sees the response of the defensive person. He thinks he's going to intercept it. And he goes to react to the ball. If he had continued on his route, he'd have been gone. Well, the last time that Marty Garagosian punted the football, uh, he had to chase it a while. Now the Blue Jays are going to call a timeout with a minute and 10 to go in the half. I'm surprised. now. Cal Fletcher's talking to Bobby Johnson probably about this particular punt situation, but I, I don't know why Southfield didn't call a timeout right after the play. Well, it, they didn't have to call a timeout because the ball was, or the time, the I'm clock sorry, wasn't yep. running. I'm sorry. And then obviously they wanted to discuss something, so they took the timeout. Mike Brenner uh, postulates that uh, there might have been too many men on the field, and that's why they called timeout. And something that I mentioned last week after Frank had departed, and I want to clarify it, that the too many men on the field rule has two, well, you can, you can amplify it a little bit, but it has really two types of penalty. Yeah, if he's trying to get off the field and doesn't participate in the play, it's a five-yard penalty. If he participates in the play, it's unsportsmanlike, and it's a 15-yard penalty. I, I had mentioned the fact that, well, I never really finished the sentence, which is not uncommon for me on occasion. Garagosian, 33.8 on the season. He's averaging 33 so far in this contest. The whistle will start play. This time a low snap, and Marty did a good job of getting it away. A spiraling kick, and a spiraling kick has a, a good chance of, uh, of taking a good roll. And Cassidy Wright picked the football up, a la Yura King on the last Billy Troy punt, and he just took it... Uh, Eight yards, a 43-yard punt and roll by Garagosian. That's probably why these punters love to play at the Silverdome because even if their average is not what they'd like it to be, they can pick up a few yards on their average. Well, they also, they get such a true bounce on this carpet. What is a true bounce? A true bounce? I'll talk about that in a minute. Oh, you teach English, though, not physics. Darziel Hall throws a little uh, sideline pass that was headed toward the sideline to Cassidy Wright. Cassidy's lying down on the ground and uh, realized, hey, I got to get up because uh, the clock is running. 35 seconds, 34, and down it runs. Two timeouts for Southfield. Now he underthrows Cassidy right, but he does a good job coming back, catching the football. Midfield goes out of bounds. First down, Blue Jays at the 49 yard line or midfield, 25 seconds to go in the half. Well, I've seen high school teams come into the Silverdome and throw the uh, the bounce lateral where they 
they drop back into a pass situation, but they actually throw the ball behind him and intentionally skip it on the ground up to the receiver. And what happens is the secondary stops, and then that person throws a pass off of that. Well, it takes longer to explain it than the coach. A draw play handoff, Bobby Johnson. Blue Jays uh, not getting much on that one. Waleed Shamami was down there along with number 79, Joe Mwani. And now 13 seconds remain. The Blue Jays apparently are going to let it run down. They're going to run one more play. Again, they have two timeouts. I don't understand that. Swing pass, sideline. Cassidy right out of bounds, 43-yard line. Run out of bounds there by Richard Harvey, number 88. Two seconds to go. And unless the scoreboard's wrong, Frank, uh, the timeout's not being used. Well, Cassidy Wright's doing a nice job of getting the ball and getting out of bounds. And uh, now that they are going to use their timeout, here I, I never could figure this out. Even when I coached, they they had a timeout a minute ago. All the water boys came out. Everybody drank. Everybody did this. And now they take another timeout. You know, not even 45 seconds later, and they've got to water everybody down. They're going in for halftime. This is an informational timeout. Coach came out there to talk. Put the water bottles away. Put the towels away, and let the coach <laughs> talk. Well, this is, of course, the final game of the year, and the Water Boys may be seniors too. <laughs> and it is on television, so okay. they, they can. <laughs> we can we can do an ISO of them at halftime. <clears throat> These are guys I know that uh, are looking forward to, if I'm not mistaken, probably uh, junior varsity players that uh, will get an opportunity to play coming up next year. Good season for the junior varsity team as well. From the 43-yard line, Cassidy Wright hopes uh, maybe they put a little extra helium in the football. Bobby Johnson in motion to the right side. Darziel Hall throws it long downfield, and it is intercepted and dropped by Yurik King, or not Yurik King, but rather Bryant Windham. And uh, that is the way the first half will end, a rather uneventful ending to a rather eventful first half. And so from the Pontiac Silverdome, our halftime are standing back awaiting the Bobby Johnson uh, kickoff. And he will again use the hash mark that is closest to the Blue Jays sideline. 12 to 7, Southfield leads as we begin the second half here at the Silverdome. <coughs> this one will bounce right into the hands of, Mar of uh, Ray Moreland. And Moreland kind of stumbles his way up to the 40-yard line. Well, Ray Moreland doing a nice job, and if I'm not mistaken, that is Ray's first kickoff return of, no, that is, uh, yep, indeed, that that's his first kickoff return of the 1988 season. How about that? Well, he uh, took full advantage of his opportunity. He gave his team good field position, and Southfield uh, Lathrop has done well when they've had the ball where they had operating room. See Marty Garagosian with the plays on his wrist. That is something that he has done over the last couple of years. I don't know if it's a complicated offense that Daryl Harper uses, but I'm sure he's sure of himself. Yuri King in the secondary. He goes to the outside, and Yuri King goes to the 45-yard line. So he picks up. He picks up nine yards. Excuse me. He picks up 13 yards, and Yurik King is doing it from all over the field. Well, you're going to see King in the backfield, and we saw him there in the West Bloomfield game. He was very effective. Uh, he was there due to an injury uh, to one of his teammates. Now, he went back to his regular wide receiver spot to start tonight's game, uh, but the second half, as we said, they're going to pull out the stops, and they put him in tail back in the eye, and that was a great opener for him. BD. Beattie is walking off the field with a little assistance from Dr. Denise Bradford, I believe. He's a little upset that he has to come out, but uh, I think probably would be more upset if he stayed in the football game and didn't know he was in there. From the 45-yard line, first down and 10. That's why coaches get him out of there so they can get their senses back. Yuri King running out of the backfield. You know. We talked about this before, Frank, in the West Bloomfield game. He didn't have Duran Stevens. Now, I don't see James Phillips out. There he is. Uh, but he used King in the backfield very effectively against West Bloomfield. Well, King has such tremendous quickness and a great ability to cut with the ball. You have to get it to him. They're playing good pass defense on him. They'll get him in the backfield and hand him the football now. Three backs in the backfield, and I think a lot of that is going to be to keep the Blue Jays off of Marty's behind. 
two yard pickup for King that time. They pitch it back to York and he finds a hole but it closes rather quickly. Carl Miller brought him down, uh, number 65 wrapping him up. Kevin Curtis getting off top of his teammate. I know Darrell would like to get one more first down here and that put him in that four down territory where he'll have four downs to pick up the 10 rather than three because he won't have to punt. I don't know what they're working on on uh, Beatty down there, but uh, they are Half attending to it. Bob Martin reminding him to watch out for Yura King. Marty back to throw, and he swings it out to the other side to Duran Stevens. His forearm gets him down the field and inside the 35, down to the 33. Jeff Reynolds made the stop, but some great great individual effort by Duran Stevens. Tremendous effort by Stevens. It, it starts out with the effort by Gary Gosian to get himself free to even throw the ball. There's uh, great pressure on him from the defensive line. He gets it over to Duran Stevens and he uh, with a stiff arm is able to pick up the first down. 33 yard line of the Blue Jays in favor and uh, possession of the Chargers. They go back to using King as a wide out and Duran Stevens has the football. Kevin Curtis was there to put his 285 pounds on Duran Stevens. Also over there with help was Marvin Reynolds. That was not Marvin Reynolds. Too big for Marvin Reynolds. Billy Troy, 76. Now we'll get some defensive changes. Goolsby will come out of there. And good to see Chris Beatty back in there and Warren Beard. It's like Marty came up uh, limping after that last play. Second down, 10 yards to go, pitches it back, and James Phillips will throw, throws it to Yura King, and King can't catch the football because Marvin Reynolds hit him right at the same time the football got there. Great defensive play by Marvin. Marvin Reynolds does a good job of wrapping up King's arms and not allowing him to reach and grab the football. You're going to see King get open. He's got position. He's going to uh, reach for the football, and you see his arm get grabbed, and uh, out comes the football. Well, the next time that Phillips throws a pass, it probably will be complete if the numbers are with him. His first pass of the season he threw was, in, was intercepted. This one goes incomplete. Last year, three different length of uh, players threw touchdown passes in their victory over Southfield. 33-yard line, Garagosian steps out of the pocket. Will Elkins goes down and the pass goes incomplete but there's a flag on the play. It's going to be face guard and you have to turn and uh, you can't wave in front of the receiver's face and they're going to call the pass interference on him and uh, but it was an excellent play on the defender's part because it was a sure touchdown if he didn't do it. You're going to see him. He never turns back and looks at the football and he can't do that. If he plays pass defense he's got to take a look at the ball. He can't go and just play the face of the offensive receiver. Now Beverly and Ricky Henry will come out of there and Kevin Curtis has to go back after his mouthpiece. He comes out, comes into the offensive line or defensive line rather with number 76, Billy Troy. So it'll be first down and 10 yards to go. Ball is at the 18 yard line. King the lone wideout, excuse me, up on the left hand side is Will Elkins. Should always assume that. Marty with time, running out of it, and now running out of a lot of things, they even room to run. Derek Woods was there, Chris Beatty was there, and a two yard loss back to the 20. It'll be second down and 12 Lathrop at the Southfield 20. 8.40 to go in the third quarter, it's 12-7 Southfield. Well, Marty saw something in the defense and he put King back into the set. He was gonna come out of it with motion and uh, he thought he could run that option pass, but he get caught from behind. They'll use both wideouts to the short side of the field now. King the flanker, the wideout being Will Elkins. During the tight end left side, back split behind Marty. Two-step drop back, now the quarterback draw, and Marty goes to the outside and is wrapped up. Drop there, Carl Miller, 65. Beatty was over there in case Marty wanted to get up and keep running. They put it down inside the 15, we'll call it the 15. They need to get it down to the, the eight yard line, so they're seven yards shy but they are in Garagosian field goal range. Well, this play is real effective at keeping those linebackers in there. He steps back, he checks, and uh, if they bail out, he's gonna run the football, and this is a uh, keep the linebackers out of the pass defense. Beatty was the one who was rushing the passer. Beard was the one who was down there with help. Here comes Locke, 
and he hits him, but he completes it for the touchdown. Yura King makes the catch in front of, of uh, Donald Blackman. Garagosian got nailed that time as he went back to throw Yura King. You can't say enough for Marty Garagosian. He has been taking a pounding back there. Just as he re released the ball, he was hit under the left armpit, and those hurt. Uh, you know, you have those rib pads and everything, but it's still a stick. King does a great job of receiving the football and giving them the lead. He needs three more to break Eric Stokes' record. Garagosian manages to split the uprights, and so now the Chargers take the lead, 14 to 12, with 7.35 to go in 7.35 to go in the third quarter. Well, Gary goes in, you're going to see him get hit. He's going to get stroked from behind the, the lookout block on the back end, but he puts it right on the numbers, and King pulls in the reception, and uh, it's six more for the Chargers. Yuri King's 12th touchdown of the season, his ninth touchdown pass reception. Uh, all of them have come from Marty Garagosian, and uh, Marty's 10th touchdown pass of the year ties the school record, and uh, I have a whole list of Lathrop school records, but I know that when you're having problems winning football games, you don't want to worry about individual records. This is uh, a high kick that may go out of bounds. Should have let it go out. Cassidy Wright goes to the outside, and he is grabbed and thrown down by Scott Lewis. Oh, Scott Lewis just made a great one-on-one -on -one play, and uh, the Blue Jays will start back at their own 20. He might have wanted to let that one go out of bounds, Frank. Well, Cassidy Wright, uh, you know, had to make a decision, but if you remember to start the game, they let it bounce and it uh, stayed inbounds, and they almost lost the football. So he did the right thing. He scooped it up, but uh, he is thrown to the, the carpet, and it looks like he picked up a rug burn on his knee. From the 20-yard line, first down and 10 for the Blue Jays. They trail by two points. Swing pass, sideline, Cassidy Wright got away from Yura King. But uh, secondary help, secondary, secondary help, if you will, by James Phillips brings him down. Well, you have a receiver of the ability of Cassidy Wright. They've got to make some decisions and mix things up. Sometimes they got to come close. Sometimes they get off him deep. Uh, here they're going to be off of him, and they check off into that slant in, and he's wide open and almost breaks it for a big play. 12 yards on that one. It'll be first down and 10 Blue Jays at the 32-yard line. Darziel Hall, the transfer from Cody High School, hands it off to Ramondo Locke, and Locke was slowed down by James Phillips. While we have a second here, let me tell you that Marty Garagosian, with uh, that one touchdown, 